My name is Paul Ratliff, and welcome back to Paul's Railroad. On today's episode, we are going to begin the assembly process of this N scale cold tipple that I designed and 3D printed. Um, if you belong to some of the many model railroad Facebook groups that I belong to, you may have already seen some images I've been posting there. And just so you know, I have uh, also created a Paul's Railroad Facebook uh, page. Uh, you can find a link to that at the bottom of this uh, video in the notes or on my banner on uh, my homepage. So we're going to get started on that right now. But before we get started, I'm going to show you guys a little trick. Uh, so I've got a lot of comments from some of the images asking about how do I do that? What are these? Uh, basically, they're just clothespins that I made into little clamps. Nothing new. Something my dad showed me years ago. But uh, once I've done it, I've seen them popping up in videos everywhere nowadays. But I haven't seen anybody show anybody how to do it. So we're going to do that real quick with this closed pin. So let's get started. Okay, everybody. I'm going to now show you how I take this and turn it into this. Um, a lot of us have used these binder clips for a long time. I don't like them uh, simply because they, they are, it's a lot of force on these and it's a very small area and I've damaged a lot of models using these over the years. And uh, actually, you know, like I said, I forgot all about this trick until just recently. Um, the first thing you have to do, you have to go and raid your wife's laundry area and get the good, the good ones here. And if she asks you what you're doing, it's play dumb. And I'm sure like, you know, it's not hard for most of us. Okay, let's sit, but seriously, let me zoom in a little bit. All right, we've all messed with these before. Just kind of twist it and get it apart. That's the easy part, right? And all you do, you can look at this one here, is you're going to flip it over. So where the barrel of the spring went into that little notch right there, we're going to turn it over. We're going to put the barrel of the spring Kind of a net notch, and the first one we're going to spread and just slip it in there where the actual spring was at. Okay, that was the easy part. This one here, flip over, and we've got to get this into here. And you can do it with your fingers, but I will suggest actually, I'm sorry, this I've got to get in there, it's the one on top. I would suggest you use a pair of nose pliers for this, and this makes life a much, much easier. It's not hard, it's just, you know, it's a little finicky. Plus, I'm trying to do this behind a camera. It doesn't make things any easier. I can't really see what I'm doing here. Let's like just get her up in there. Just kind of slide it all together. There you go. Nice little clamp. It has a nice uh, deep throat in so you really can get into some uh, uh, tighter spaces or deeper spaces than you can with these little spring clamps. And like I said, it's not a whole lot of force here. That doesn't hurt at all. That spring clamp, you know, if you've ever put those on your fingertips, you know they hurt. Anyway, anyways, like I said, these are great little tools to have around and if they break, you know, these are so cheap. It's a lot cheaper than going and buying those little micro clamps at the hobby stores, isn't it? All right, now let's get on to what we're actually here for. All right, what we see in front of us here is all the parts and pieces for the cold tipple. Now, um, you, as you all uh, well know, uh, maybe some of you don't, but everything I design and print for my uh, layout, I actually sell the files uh, over on Colts 3D. Again, there's a uh, link in my banner page, and there'll be a link in the description where you can go if you want to check it out. I don't charge a lot of money for these. Um, I do charge a little bit just because it helps me keep the uh, railroad going, actually. And uh, if anybody has ever de designed anything, you know, it, it takes quite a bit of time to, uh, to design something. Uh, but if you do go and buy that file, everything is in the file, even the floor for the main building itself. I chose not to print the floor out simply because it's just a big square piece of plastic that was going to take like five hours to print. 
and I had some three mil plywood laying around, so I decided to use that. Uh, same with all the uh, cross members for the support structure that's going to go underneath this. Um, you can print them all out if you want to. I printed them to make sure they work. They work just fine. But I have a bunch of little coffee stores around, so you know why not uh, mix and match things together, make it a little bit easier on me, save a little time, save a little filament. Okay, um, first thing we're going to do is we are going to build up this platform. We're not going to put everything together right away because we need to have um, all the legs on and to get everything to where we can kind of dry fit stuff because we have this little porch area that goes onto the side right here with the staircase and we need to make sure everything's going to, you know, fit properly when it's all actually finally put together. Um, so what I did, again, is I took the piece of 3mm plywood, I took some coffee stores and I just, you know, went around the border with it. I only did that just to help me line up these much easier. So we'll just uh, get these glued up here. Okay, you can see I just kind of laid everything out to, to where it goes so I don't get confused and grab the wrong part and piece for the wrong spot. Again, I'm just going to use some Gorilla Super Glue. I'm going to start back here in this back corner. Nothing too fancy. Hi right, guys and gals, if any of you are watching. Um, I don't know if you can see or not, but what I did was uh, I took a ruler and I marked up about four millimeters on these outer legs on both sides. Uh, that equates to about uh, two uh, scale feet and end scale. I did that so I could start uh, putting on my little cross members here, my support for my support structure. And uh, before anybody starts, uh, you know, commenting and yelling, I know that these are kind of out of scale for this. But this is mine, and that's what I wanted to use. I could go through and cut these down, make them uh, thinner, but I, I'm not going to do that. Um, if you do buy this, however, um, the actual 3D files for these are to scale. Um, I'm just, you know, my layout is kind of like a rundown, you know, back in the hills little town with this little old coal tipple. And, you know, in my mind, they put it together with whatever they could get their hands on. So, again, we're just going to glue this all up. All I did was I took these coffee stores and I, you know, made them to work, you know, however long I wanted them. I cut them to size. Very simple. So let's get it glued on. And uh, once I get that done, I'm going to mark up from the uh, lower coffee stores here to uh, where I want the upper ones to go. And we'll go from there. All right, I glued the insides up too. I was at it, no need to show that, very simple. Um, next, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, measure where I want the upper cross pieces to go. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you a mistake that I made. Now, I designed this and I still made a mistake. And the reason I made a mistake is because I used this uh, wooden base for the floor instead of printing out a plastic one. And that's not the mistake. Mistake is when I put this lumber around the edges here to, uh, to for little guides. I forgot when I designed this little walkway for the center that these actually needed to go all the way to the end. So I don't know if you can see or not, but these end pieces no longer line up with these two. So if you print out the floor and put it together the way it was designed, there's no problem. If you do what I did here, uh, we're going to have to fix this now. That's down the road. But I just wanted to show you that even I, the one that designed this, makes mistakes all the time. 
It's always a learning process. As everybody who's ever modeled anything knows, it's always a learning process. Okay, what I'm going to do next, like I said, I'm just going to measure for these and uh, put these cross members on. Then I'll show you how I do the X bracing. All right, they're all glued up. I just want to show you real quick how handy these little clothespins are. You most definitely cannot get down in there easily with one of these, but nice, nice, works well. Okay, back at it. All my cross pieces are dry. And over here I cut out all my X bracing. Um, all I did is I took a piece. I just kind of, you know, match it to where I wanted it, cut it, and made a bunch of them. Very simple. Very simple. And I half fixed the companionway or walkway underneath here. All I did is I took a razor saw and I cut these off and took a file and cleaned up the ends. And when we get to the, that point, we'll put this back together again. Hey. I'll make mistakes, right? So just real quick, all I'm going to do is I'm going to start gluing the sex bracing up. Just remember, you know, to make it look right. You know, that the outside one goes like this. And of course, you want to make the X and make the inside one go the opposite way. Um, you know, I didn't mention either. Nice thing about using these coffee stirrers. You know, they are so cheaply made because they're just made to be, you know, stuck in a cup of coffee, stirred and thrown away. That they're not all perfectly the same. They're not the same dimension. Some are twisted a little bit. Some are thinner on the ends. And it makes it look really like some really, um, you know, a rough hewn uh, lumber was made to build uh, this. So that's kind of cool. So anyways, uh, let's get this put together real quick. There we have it. The ones in the center, we're not going to do just yet. Not until we get the uh, walkways in place where we want them. And in, to, in, uh, in order to do that, I have this, uh, this little set of stairs right here. That we've got to get mounted as well. So we know. So I'll probably end up having to recut these. Next, we need to make more. Okay. But... As you can see, it has started this up pretty well. It's amazing what you can do with just a little bit of plastic and some uh, scrap sticks, some coffee stores, huh? All right, we've got the building sitting on the superstructure underneath. And as you can see, we've got it to the right height where this little porch section lines up just the way it needed to line up. That way, when we get to that point, we can add our stairs and our railing. Let me show you real quick how I did that. After I got to this point, all I did was, as you can see inside here, hold on just one second, let me zoom out just a little bit here. As you can see inside of our main cold tipple building itself, I installed these uh, little strips of wood that sit on top of this floor to give me the right height. And it was very simple. And, you know, I, I didn't design anything for in here. All you really need to do is if you're going to print out everything and not use any wood, is just print out a couple extra pieces of these long cross members and just glue them in. Or just, you know, use uh, coffee stores like I'm doing. I'm really liking these coffee stores. I think I'm going to build some more stuff out of them. Anyhow. I just I just sat this in here where I thought it was going to be where it needed to be. I laid, you know, I don't know if you can see it up. There's a little registration mark there where this porch goes in underneath the doorway. I just laid it there, took a straight edge, lined everything up as well as I could, uh, took a sharpie and just and made a mark. And off that mark, I just took some measurements to get where I needed to be. Very simple. All right, since that is done, now it's time to attach this uh, little catwalk. I will 
that we have designed. It goes along with these uh, stairs. I think it's probably going to be best to uh, maybe try to glue these stairs on first. I think I'm going to have to uh, trim the edge of this catwalk again only because, of course, I, you know, decided to go off the, you know, <laughs> the plans that I actually designed and go rogue. So, you know, again, uh, something relatively simple. You know, everything is, you know, angled so it sits properly on the ground. Now, mind you, this is going to be a fragile structure. This is not like a lot of the downtown buildings I designed that are pretty robust. With all these little thin pieces and stuff. So you're going to have to be careful no matter what you do with this. And since I left this uh, center registration uh, or support for this beam on here, I'm going to take some off of both sides. And these are all printed with an FDM printer. So, you know, this whole structure is printed with an FDM printer. So you do not need to have a resin printer to do this kind of stuff. I mean, you're not gonna get the greatest detail like you can from a resin printer, but you'd be hard pressed to print something this size with uh, an affordable resin printer anyhow. Okay, so let me uh, take all this down and I'll show you everything real close real quick. Uh, this is the uh, stairs and a little porch area. These are two separate files. Again, this is printed with an FDM printer. I mean, why don't you take your time and set your machine up? It's amazing what you can do with them. Okay, so we've already seen all of these structures here. Now, when I left you a minute ago, I was finishing up the cross members inside of this in a little catwalk here. Like I said before, again, if you print out the actual base for this, you don't want to go through the trouble of doing all the trimming like I did. But I'm kind of glad I did it this way. I, I like this a little bit better. But it, again, it's just, you know, cross pieces and X bracing, just like they do it in the real world. And I did the same exact thing for this taller structure here. Now, when you print this out, if you do print it out, the front and the back this is all, all three of these uprights, these tall pieces, these are one print. And then you got one print here and one print here. Now, um, if you do want to, like I said, I have all of these available to be printed out. I just, you know, I liked using the wood. I thought it was more fun this way and that's what I had on hand and it was a lot cheaper, a lot faster actually. Uh, again, um, you know, just, you know, you're horizontal pieces and then your cross members. Now what I did here is um, I started on the side, which is, you know, this is this, this is the side, this is front to back for a reference. Anyhow, started on the side, measured up four millimeters, which is approximately two scale feet and end scale, the same as I did here, and I started my first row. Then what I did was since I knew these were going to be stacked on top of these, I actually went to the sides. I started on the inside first. I laid down a cross piece here or a horizontal piece here and there. Of course, on the outsides too. Then I went back to the front here. Or I'm sorry, I went back to the side here. I'm getting myself all confused. Just ignore me. Anyhow, I put these ones down. Then I just measured the distance between this and this one and divided by two. And there's the center. That's all I did with that. And of course, once you get these ones down, these ones just go on top. Very simple. And just glue it on up. Now you will notice that on here, on this side, these are cut flush. These are protruding. That is because this is the side that goes against the main structure, the main building. So they have, they have to be flush to get up tight enough. Um, this was quite a long process, a lot longer than I expected it to be. So I'm going to have to make this a two-part video. The next video, 
uh, we're going to get these all painted and weathered, and we're going to do the roofs. I got something a little special, I think, for the roofs. So stay tuned for that. And you know, like you know, like always, you guys subscribe for me. I, you know, I love I love seeing my subscribers go. My account going up. It's pretty awesome. It helps with you know YouTube analytics and gets my videos posted for more people to see. And don't forget to hit that bell icon as well. And as always, you know, take care. I'll see you next time. Good night. Mm -hmm.